What is going on, kid family? Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we are going to be working on the short block of the GM Ecotech motor that we are trying to take apart, reassemble, learn as we go. We already reinstalled the whole valve train in the head. We got a beautiful valve cover that we used, 2K clear coat to paint it. So I'm really happy how that turned out. So let's jump into the short block, take it apart, see what's going on. So stay tuned and watch the entire video. So if you guys are not familiar, we picked up this GM Ecotech. It's a L61 motor that came in a lot of base model cars. This is a non variable valve timing motor. So it's a pretty easy motor to work on. Again, check out the playlist. We just finished up with the head and now I'm trying to get started on this short block while we still have decent weather in the summer months here in the Midwest because once it gets cold, it's gonna be much harder to take things apart, clean things since we won't have a hose and whatnot. So all, all in all, there was a lot of coolant contamination in this motor, which leads me to believe maybe a bad, bad head gasket, which we have right over here but the cylinders themselves look okay they kind of look wet right now because when we were doing compression tests we put in oil here to do a wet compression test but all in all the cylinder bores and whatnot look pretty good it's not hydro locked like an old engine that i tried to learn on before was completely hydro locked so all in all i'm pretty happy with the condition of this motor now we're gonna now what we're gonna do right now i just want to put the crank back on so we can spin this motor so we can just get a nice look of the pistons going up and down we can look at the cylinder bores see how everything is turning on the bottom end there is currently still some oil old oil left in the motor so before I drain it I do want to spin it right now and see how she turns all right let's put this on Keep in mind where the keyway is. I believe that's what it's called. We're gonna match that up on the crank hub. All right, keyway's in. Let's pop this bolt in. And man, we kind of stripped this bolt a little bit when we were taking it off. I'm telling you, man, I don't got the right tools for some of these jobs here, but hey, we're still gonna tackle what we need to tackle. All right, you guys ready? Let's take a look. This thing is spinning super smooth. It, this honestly can be a good engine. Honestly, everything seems like it's okay. Let me see if I can get some vacuum here built up. I've seen the boosted boys do this. No vacuum. I can't get a vacuum on here though. Maybe my hand's just too small. Gotta say this thing does stank and it is dirty. So let me get some maybe let me get some better lighting for y'all. So as far as I can tell, there are no big issues on the short block right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking off the entire chain assembly right here, which pretty much consists of the water pump, two balance shafts right over here, some kind of oil sensor, and a chain tensioner. So we're gonna remove all that. And essentially at that point, we'll drain the oil, we'll flip the motor, and we'll start tackling the underside of the motor will start taking it apart so we can eventually get these rods and pistons out of these bores. I gotta say this is one of the easier crankshafts to remove because some of these crankshafts you got to have special tools on them to remove and it could 
be really hard especially if you got this on a vehicle and you're trying to remove it off the vehicle but all of these bolts are 10 mil bolts so very easy to remove we're gonna start off just loosening up which I already did the tensioner then we're gonna loosen up a lot of these uh, sliders oil sensor I believe this is an oil pressure sensor and go from there I'm gonna time-lapse this a little bit All right, we got the chain off, boys. And now these balance shafts, the way you take them off, you gotta take a, you need something to put in one of those holes in order to undo these bolts, because they'll just spin if you try to unbolt them here. So what I'm doing here is I'm using one of these hex keys to put in the hole here in between the sprocket then I undo the sprocket just like here got that loose takes some effort to do alright so right now we flip the motor around and we gotta take off this flywheel we got a couple bolts here that we need to remove because once we want to separate that motor uh, from the bottom end this is going to be a real pain if these bolts are still in. So we got to remove this flywheel right now. I got a Harbor Freight Impact Gun. Shout out to Bullets Garage for letting me use this. And let's see. Hopefully we can take this off. Because if not, then we got a few issues. All right, they're coming off. Right, I'm really glad this came out as easy as it did. Let's go ahead and try to remove that, pull it out. Well, that was pretty easy, and this is pretty light. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the rear main seal of an engine. It's this is where it's in between the transmission goes in right here, and this is the rear main seal. And if this seal goes bad, you're gonna have a leak going down in between the engine, you're gonna be losing oil. And it's a really hard seal to replace. Clearly, you got to take everything apart to this point to replace it. All right, guys. So at this point, I do want to drain the oil. We're going to see the real quality of the oil that was in there. We're also going to have to tilt the motor eventually and get the coolant that's in there. There is a lot of coolant left inside this motor before we can flip it around and start playing with it. Go ahead and see what comes out of her. Actually, not bad. That's good oil. I'm really surprised. I'm not going to lie. I thought this whole thing would be milky just like the, the head was. I got to admit, guys, this is probably the easiest oil change I've done in my entire life. All right, let's take a look here, what we got going on. Ooh, this thing's kind of massacred. Yeah, this filter's all over the place, man. Wonder if we can learn 
about the motor from this filter. We'll keep this somewhere else. If we see any kind of uh, metal specks in there, that might mean maybe bearings went bad on the bottom end. We'll have to figure it out. At this point, I'm just gonna kind of tilt the block, see what happens. Hopefully, we can get some of the coolant out without making a big mess. So here we go, here goes nothing. Let's see. Not too bad, boys, huh? We got a little spill here on the on the right. But that's okay. It's coming out. Again, these cylinder walls look pretty darn good here. Let me see if I can show you guys the walls. Look pretty good to me. Let me know. You guys are the pros here. I don't see nothing wrong with them. I'm gonna let this drain for a little bit and then we'll be back. All right guys, so now the plan is to remove the oil pan bolts. This looks like a 13 mil. We're gonna remove the whole circumference and then we can take out the oil pan cover, which will expose the inside of the short block. So let's get started. Everything went well. Last block I had, I tried to take off the oil pan. Some of the bolts were seized. I was 10 years younger I ended up flipping it selling the motor just because I couldn't tackle the inside so this is good this is progress all right guys we got all the bolts loose I'm gonna try to take this valve cover off here now this is silicone in so it might be a little bit tricky I might have to pound on it in a few spots before we get this thing to lift Right, progress. All right, y'all ready? And I really need to get my uh, head mount so you guys can see first person point of view. Here we go. All right. So what do we got? We got a really filthy oil pan it's just as I imagined probably better than I imagined it to be honestly and then you got a really filthy dark burned bottom end like you can see all this debris right here look at that it's just all over caked on and yeah that's where we are right now so at this point you got yourself I believe these are the main caps it's like a whole tray some some uh, crankcase caps 
Okay, so for some crankcases, you just got caps that hold down the crankcase. In this situation, I think this whole portion locks down the crankcase, which I think makes more sense. It's I, I think it'll be more durable. We got a lot of bolts here that we have to remove, but first, we're gonna have to check the proper removal sequence because you can't just remove these bolts in any way you want. Just like for the head, when we were removing the head bolts, off of the head there was a specific removal sequence there is a specific torque sequence so we got to go online real quick check out the removal sequence here and then we can start removing some of this all right guys well I'm gonna end this video right here I think it's already a quite a long video so make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're interested in this rebuild right here the GM Ecotech L61 motor but all the supercharger motors from the cobalts and the supercharged motors are very similar to this style and design so we're looking at about the same kind of procedures for the most part um, check out the playlist if you're into that and again support your boy hit that like button i'll catch you on the next video i ain't here for the money i ain't here for the fame though it might be nice to own a jet plane i'ma do it all for you come along and see it's true but the world is pretty cool.